Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George, and today, as promised, we're going to produce a video for you. It's a tutorial on how to assemble and operate your PWM, your pulse width modulator. Now, you know, this is like the PID without a feedback mechanisms. Now, remember, the, the, the PID has a thermocouple that you connect to it, and it goes to the top of your column or in whatever process you're trying to track, and you set the temperature, and it has that feedback mechanism, so it thinks, and it does, it, it does all the adjustment for you, and it maintains. Now, what's different about this is the feedback mechanism is right here. That's the difference. So, what you will be tracking and monitoring your own temperature where in whatever process you have, but you will be making your own fine adjustments with this knob from zero to 100%. So you plug in your heater element here, and on this knob, and this will track both voltage and amperage, so you'll have an idea, as an example, if you've got a 2000 watt element at 120 volts, we already know that pulls like 16.6 .6 amps. Uh, you can adjust this knob to only provide eight amps or you can turn it down to 4 amps, or you can turn all the way up to 16 amps. And additionally, as that's happening, the voltage will be adjusted as well because they are purport they go with each other. So you can be able to track that. Now, there's two ways to wire this up. You can wire this up so it tracks the voltage on the uh, receptacle, or you can tr wire it up so it tracks the voltage coming in. I, I actually prefer the voltage coming in because what I'm more concerned about is the amperage how much pressure of that electromotive force is going to that element to make that element work. I hope that makes sense to you because it's that simple. So what we'll need today in order to do that, of course we're going to need the box and I've got one here. It's like a four by six by eight or anywhere comparable about that size and they they run the gambit on eBay or Amazon. All the stuff I've got here you get from Amazon or eBay or at, you know your electronics outlet. All right, let's keep going now. Okay, we're going to need a power cord. I've got one of those, and I'll set that down. Now, we're also going to need a couple of tools. Now that's the the basics there. There's a, a, a cross tip screwdriver, flat tip screwdriver. You know the wire strippers. Uh, I recommend a set of calipers if you've got them. It just makes it easy for measurements and, and to put things in the right place. You'll also need your PWM, your pulse width modulator. It looks, it comes in a bag like this, and this is what it looks like opened up. It's got a fan on the top, and it's all one unit. And later on, we'll show you how to. We've got to disassemble this for just a few seconds so that we can mount this to the bottom of the box. We don't want it moving around in the box, and I'll show you how to do that. Then, of course, you've got to have your digital uh, multimeter, voltmeter, or you could put just a, a, the amp meter in there. Uh, you don't have to have the voltmeter. You, you can get a, a smaller one that's a really a little bit a lot cheaper, and it's just an amp meter because uh, that's all you're really tracking. That's all you really want to track anyway. And there's the donut that goes with it. I'll show you how all that works, and it works just like if you're familiar with the amp clamp. And you know when you're trying to test the amperage uh, for uh, a device that you've got plugged in to find out how many amps it's drawn, if you can isolate one wire, one hot wire. Uh, not multiples, just one, and you place the amp clamp around it, and then you put it in, and you select the proper setting, and it'll tell you how many amps are running through that wire. And the amperage is like the pressure. Look at it like a hose. You know, you've got a gallon running from here to here, and you turn it on, but now you want to run two gallons from here to here in the same amount of time. Uh, there's a certain amount of pressure that's built up inside. That's the same thing with electricity. It's a good correlation. And the byproduct of that's heat. That's why we have to be concerned about using the proper wire size, you know, 12 to 14 gauge wire. Uh, anything smaller than that will cause a heating situation where your wires may start to melt because you've got a lot of amperage going through that wire. All right. Now, so we've got that, and that's what we're going to be measuring. And the reason you can measure that is because as amperage goes through, electricity goes through that wire, it creates a magnetic field around there. And we can measure that magnetic field with an amp clamp or with the donut from our amp meter. And that donut is just going to slide on there. It's just going to set 
just like that and it's going to connect to the amp meter. So we can measure it that way and that'll tell us how many amps we got going through there. You're also going to need, and I've got the 20 amp, 125 volt uh, receptacle. These run probably about a dollar more than the regular ones, the 15 amp, 120s. But for your money and for your safety, it's you're probably better off having one of these because it can handle a little bit more of the amperage. Your other option, and they make these, uh, there's a small square plug-ins, and I'll show you how that operates. It's got a back clip on it. And then, of course, I call this a dumaflidgy. Uh, I don't have a proper name for it, but this is where your cable goes in, then comes off, you drill a hole in the side of the box, and that holds your that holds your cable inside the box. So I got one of those I'll set aside. It's helpful to have a little bit of super glue because once you put all these in there, you put just a little bit of super glue around on the inside and that makes sure nothing will move around or get out of the way. Now the easiest way to cut these, oh, before I get to that, let me move a little bit closer and show you something. If you decide to use one of these plug-in models, you'll notice that if you look on the front, you'll see the ground and then the long blade Oh, that side, there we go. The long blade is always the neutral, okay? Always the neutral. And you'll notice this plug is, is designed for either a 120 or 125 volt plug, because the 125 volt plug sometimes has a horizontal blade, so it'll take both of them. And it's rated at 20 amps. Now, when you flip it over on the back, you'll see there's got those small connectors, those knives in there. And if you look at this one, and we'll take this one for example, the ground plug, there's a ground hole. When you turn it over, you'll see that little knife blade right there, and that's for the ground wire. Now, watch this. You don't have to, there's no need to strip a wire because that's what these blades do. You just track it, place that wire across that blade, take a flat tip screwdriver, and kind of give it a push. And what that blade does is that blade will cut the wire and make contact. So, there. I've got the ground wire in there. Let me do the other two and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Now we do the same thing. We track the smaller one for our hot wire. Place that in there and then just give it a simple push. Sometimes a little bit difficult. Give it a little push. It'll make its contact and then you're on bus in business. Then I'll do the white one. Now this is the neutral wire. Remember that this one goes to the longer blade. Give that one a push. And you'll know when they go all the way down because they'll go thunk. There, see? Thunk. Now, once you've got that done, once you have that, here's the back. And the backing is pretty unique because it's got these small vertical risers on there and what they do is they ensure that these wires never cross or touch each other. So they, it's positive separation. Now it only goes on there one way and if you're like me you'll try four or five different ways until it finally fits and when it slides on, you see that? You just close it and it's connected. So there, there's your receptacle and your receptacle is ready to go. Yeah. Your receptacle, I've got a box here. Now this one's made for, I've got this one already pre-cut out for a PID. And that's, I'll, I'll put two receptacles in here. And I'd recommend that you slide your receptacle because it's got these two keepers on the side. And if you cut that hole just right, those two keepers pop out once you get it all the way in and it'll hold it inside the box. Now you can get them back out, but I'd recommend you put the receptacle in the box and then hook the wires to it. Because once you hook the wires to it, it's kind of difficult to get it in the box. So that's my advice. Now, in order to cut these out, I made some patterns. I've got an amp meter pattern. And I'll just use a Sharpie, lay this on the box exactly where I want it, trace it out, and that's where I'm going to cut. And then I've got one for the 20 amp, 125 volt. And I actually cut this one the same size as the cover so that you'll always know when you put your amp meter in, you'll know where, because the worst thing that can happen is you put the amp meter in and you cut the hole for that. And then when you put the cover on it, it covers half the amp meter. You don't want that to happen. So that'll be the same size as the cover that goes on the plug. And of course, if you're going to use uh, the small square one, 
uh, th th I got one here cut out for that as well. Now, here's what I use. Let's slide back here. This is what I use to cut the box with. I've got a small Dremel or a rotary tool, you know, with that flexible line on it, and I've got a foot switch. So the foot switch, it, it, it's really unique. It's easy to use. You don't have to have it. These are just nice to have because you can sit, you can go, and you can stop, and you can move. Now, what I have on here is I got the small round blade. It's got teeth on it like a saw. Uh, they're really inexpensive. Uh, and I put that on there. You can put a small one on it. You can put a large one on it, whatever you want. I did try the Dremel, you know, the cutting disc. And that works. It works well. It works just as equally as, as this one. I, I like this one better because... With this one, it's actually kind of like grinding your, your, your line down, and then all that plastic will start to feed up because it, it melts. It gets hot, it melts, it feeds up, and then you got to cut all that off, and it, it can be a little bit messy. Uh, this one will do the same thing, uh, but it actually, the teeth actually cut out some of the material, so you don't have as much buildup. That's what I have to offer you. So, with that, Let's get right into assembling this box. Well, let's get down to business. This is uh, one thing I didn't mention was you, it might have an X-Acto knife might be helpful. Just cut plastics off. And also you're gonna wind up um, trying to smooth the edges of your cuts. It, it's just natural, it happens. Uh, and I always cut them just a little bit smaller, just, just in case, because it's easier to cut a little bit away from the plastic so that you're items fit as a you can't put any back so be careful about that now um, I'll lay this on here and I'll show you what I was talking about with these uh, patterns now it would be a travesty to put all this hard work in this and these are just lessons that I've learned and remember there's probably a hundred different ways of doing this, this is just George's way but it works for me so and you'll see that I'll put my patterns on like that so that they don't interfere with each other because another thing you don't want to do is put it on there, you know, and get it set. And then when you put your cover on top of your receptacle, you know how the receptacle gets that plastic cover? When you put that on there, of course, here's what you don't want. You don't want it covering your screws. You don't want it too low. You don't want it way in here where it covers the amp meter. Oh, because that's happened to me before. So, you know, you learn by mistakes. And uh, I'm not going to repeat those again. So I'll place these on here, and in just a few minutes, I'll mark them and show you what I'm talking about. So I know I want that one there. I'll be right with you. Okay, you can see how I've got that outlined. And uh, what I'll do is I'll cut, and when I do make my cut, I'll make sure I cut on the inside of this line, which means that, oh boy, let me show you this. Instead of cutting like out here, I'll cut in here so that the side of my blade goes right down that line. And what that does is it makes it a really, really tight fit. Uh, because at the end, you know, once I pop out that center, then I'll use my X-Acto knife. Uh, I may use a Dremel. Uh, anything that's necessary in order to get that the exact right size because they don't all come out exactly the same way because what I want is I want for my in this particular case I'm going to want this digital meter to slide in that hole and I want these keepers that are on the end to depress and then once it gets in that hole to pop back out so that this won't come out of there and I also want to make sure that I've got a tight fit around this receptacle so that when I do screw it in and put my bolts on the end of it, that uh, it, it doesn't move around. That, and also it looks nice that way. It's, it really looks like a professional done job. So let me get on to cutting here and uh, I'll show you how we do this. And then, I mean, it's, it's really straightforward after that, at that point. Uh, I'll cut these out and then I'll come back with you. I got a foot switch to operate this, so I don't have to worry about stopping. See, I usually run one straight line 
all the way down so that I've got something to follow. Because once you get through the plastic, if, if you get off a little bit, it's, it's really hard to adjust. But if you run one straight line down through there, it's a whole lot easier to, uh, to maintain that straight cut. And then I'll just, I'll just go down little by little. Oh, let me turn that up a little bit. Because you can control the RPMs on this. There we go. There we go. We've got one straight cut all the way through. Now you see that build up on the side? That's don't worry about that. We'll, I'll show you. We'll just take a uh, the Exacto knife. Actually, it'll pop off with your finger right now. But later, we take the Exacto knife and shave that right off. So I'll finish cutting this up, and I'll be right back. All right. Um, I've got them cut out, and if they don't pop out real easy for you, you know, once you get it cut, because it's, sometimes it's hard, you know, with a round blade, it's hard to get them all the way to the edges. Uh, you can just push, turn, bend, it, it'll pop out. If it doesn't, just uh, just use your razor knife and then just cut the corners like that, and it will pop out for you. And in the end, you know, then you've got that little bit of what I, you can call slag, uh, that buildup of uh, that, that melted plastic, and that'll shave right off. So, and that's what you wind up with. So now what I want to do is, and I've learned a lot of lessons because I've built a bunch of these and the PIDs. Um, what you want to do now is just make sure that your items fit. And if they don't, just make a mental note of, and you'll see there that I've got just a little, it'll fit there, but it won't fit. It fits there, but it won't fit completely across. So I got to do just a little bit of shave. And I'd rather shave off a few millimeters because like I said, remember, once you get this cut uh, and you're a little bit too big, you can't put any plastic back. So it, you're better off starting smaller and then work your way out with, with an X-Acto knife. So what I'll do is I'll continue to do this. And then um, when I do the receptacle itself, I'll take these screws off. I'll get the receptacle placed in there, which I've also got to shave. I can see just a little bit. Uh, and once I get that on there, I'll take a drill and I'll drill two holes and I'll put my own bolts in there, small ones, because they don't need to be that long. Uh, and then we'll go on to the next step. Hang in there and we're gonna get to wiring. Now we've got our wire power going into the box. And you'll see that, that's a three quarter inch hole you have to drill. Now you can do that by either using, there it is, a three quarter inch spade bit, a regular bit, it, it really doesn't matter, or uh, you can use a step bit. And that's what I used on this one because the step bit, what it does is it goes in and then it'll step to the next size, step in, until you're happy with the size you want and you remove it. Uh, and you can step all the way through. So, and I also did four holes on each side and that's for the ventilation because on my PWM has a fan on it and it would not be advisable to put this in here without any holes for ventilation because then the fan's doing nothing. So we put some holes. Just make sure you put the same amount of holes on each side. You know, our next intricate step it was to open up the PWM. And there's a small screw in this corner, a small screw back here. And once you remove those screws, just with a little bit of maneuvering, this lid comes off and it exposes the inside. You'll see that. Now I've taken the knob off just to make it easy for me because I'm going to put it in the top of the box. Now, what I'm going to need to do, because of the way this one's designed, uh, there's no extension on the potentiometer and you'll see that's right there there's no extension wire on that because it's it's made made it right to, it's really really well made so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a, two small holes here so that I can mount this to the face and it, it'll be sitting like that inside the box and then uh, I'll mount that and then we'll put the cover back on and then we'll wire it up very, very simple, very straightforward. You don't have to have a degree in anything to do this. Um, it's just a really, really a neat, de neat device. So let's get to mounting this in here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this small lug that goes around the outside of that arm because I'm going to use that to mount inside the box. And then I'm going to find out what the size of that thread is or the width of that so I can get the proper drill bit to drill the proper hole 
so it just looks all nice and professional and that's where the calipers come in handy oh and it looks like that's a quarter inch so I've got a quarter inch drill bit I'll just drill a hole and put it in there so I'll be back in a few minutes and I'll show you what our results are man this is this is so easy uh, now where we've got our module uh, mounted to the face so everything is there for us now the only thing we've got left to do is, is insert the digital meter and if you do that you know when you're looking at it just make sure that the blue side well you'll figure it out because if you put it in and turn it on numbers are upside down you got to take it out turn it stick it back in but you must make sure that the the blue connectors are on the outside of the box because it reads from left to right okay uh, easy enough said now what I'm going to do is I'll take this and we've got two connections to make uh, that we there's a hot and a neutral in and there's going to be a hot and a neutral out and it's straightforward uh, my convention has always been of course it doesn't really matter but stick with do one thing that works and stick with it so I've got four wires here this is a number one number two number three number four black white in black white out okay so it's black white in black white out now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire that digital meter to track the voltage going in and the amperage going out so we're gonna actually jump a wire from here and here to the multimeter to the yeah the multimeter and then when we run our hot from our module to the brass side of our receptacle we're going to put the donut on that and then of course from the other the white wire goes to the silver side of the terminal or of the uh, receptacle so remember because the, the silver side is the longest blade you see that yeah it's the longest blade and the hot is always the shortest one so and the only thing we've got left then is we've got the ground wire which goes on the receptacle now how simple could that be all right let's get it put together yeah see now that I've got this all in here this is the module and you'll see the donut that I have there I call that a donut but that's what we use to measure the amperage let's look to the blue connector now what I've got to do is I've just got to connect the module uh, give this some power connect the module I'll show you that and the receptacle and we're in business so first thing I'll do is I'm going to add a few connectors to the bottom or uh, to the ends of these wires it just makes it easier to connect it to the uh, module strip those and I'll tell you what a pair of these strippers are really nice to have but you can do it the you can do it the hard way and we'll just slide that in there and then crimp it do the same thing on this one oh yeah slide that in there and crimp it and remember we go black white black white so I'm gonna start with the out <clears throat> And what I'll do here is I'll, I'll just loosen this screw, put the spade in here. All right, there's my black out. Okay, so you can see I've got my black. Well, there it is, my black and my white. That's the out. And uh, now there, there was a cover on here. I, I removed the cover so it's easier for you to see now I'm going to take this black and this white will go to these two screws the first two black and then white and at the same time I'll put a small jumper and we call them jumper wires a black and a white or whatever color I use and that's only going to go from there right to here and that's just going to give this power all right now remember now when we hook up this black wire this is the power wire it's going to go through this donut There we go. 
and then it's going to go right around here. It's going to connect to that brass screw. And then this white wire is just going to connect to the silver screw. And then we'd be all set. Be right there. Now, okay, we, we're at the final portion of the wiring. I just want to make sure I had made one more stop so that I can show you what I've got. Now, remember, we had the black and the white. Okay, so that's the hot and the neutral, and there's my ground. So I went from the black wire on pin number one, the white wire on pin number two. Then I took a, I didn't have white and black, so I used blue and yellow. I took a blue wire from pin one, which is my jumper, and that goes to the pin on the amp meter. And then I took the yellow wire, which jumps from the neutral, and it went to the other screw. Now remember, you see here I've got the, the donut on the black wire, which comes out. There's pin one. The hot wire comes out and goes to the brass side of the receptacle, and that's where my donut is. That's the sensor that's going to tell me how much amps are going through there. And there's the white wire that just goes right here to the silver side of the receptacle, so the receptacle is going to work. And now that should really make sense because it's so straightforward, but I want to make go slow, step by step, so you really got it. Now the only thing, what have I got left? The only thing left is the ground wire, which is here, and there's my ground screw. So I'm going to attach this wire to this ground screw, and I'm going to put this box together. We're going to turn this puppy on. We've done it. So this is our uh, PWM, Pulse Width Modulator. All wired and ready to go, and you'll notice I got 123 volts, and that's what's being supplied to the box. And right now it's reading what 1.5, 0.9, 1.5 amps. That's bleeder amperage going to the receptacle. There's there's nothing pulling it there. Now you'll remember that I used that really small wire uh, to go to the amp meter, and and the reason for that is it's a whole lot easier to work with. Plus your your amp meter is not drawing that many. It doesn't matter how many amps you have available. It's how many amp, well, how much amperage does your item draw? Uh, as an example, uh, I could pl I'm going to do I'm going to plug a light in here in a second, and it doesn't take a whole lot of amps for a light to work, uh, but it does take 120 volts. Um, then, then, but when I plug in a, an element, the element's going to draw that much more because of its difference of resistance. So, uh, let's plug this light in because I always like to have a visual. A visual aid to show us that uh, we are successful. And here we go. We'll plug the light in. And we're going to start to dial it up. Now, a light's only going to work when it gets to the appropriate amount of amperage that it's going to draw. And you'll see, look at that. It comes on real dim. I can dim it down or I can brighten it all the way up. And it's only one, uh, it only draws one amp. One amp at 122 volts, and uh, I can also adjust that. So if I if I drop, oh, it's actually it's 1.4 amps, and when I drop it back down to like 0.9 or 0.8 amps, it gets dimmer, and then dimmer and dimmer yet until I can shut it off. So you can see I've got maximum control over the width of that phase uh, of that. Yeah, of that wave, I've got the width, I've got control over that, so that therefore I can control how much power goes to that. Isn't that fantastic? Now, you and I have just completed the theory, a little bit of theory, but actually wiring up a pulse width modulator uh, in a box, and I already put the cover on here too, so you can see that. You see how it all works out perfect. It looks professional. It's uh, it's well designed. It'll, it'll last you for years. So. All I've got to offer after that is, you know, as always, uh, you know, like us, share us with your friends, all those things, comment, because we really, really enjoy the comments, and happy distilling.